Welcome to LE Solutions for an easy BI tutorial series. My name is Peter and in this tutorial we will show you how you can create a reliability and sprint and spillover report. Reliability shows what percentage of work a scrum team committed to that it was able to deliver during a sprint. It's calculated as the total number of story points that were committed and completed, divided by the committed story points at the beginning of the sprint. Sprint and spillover represents the percentage of work that was committed to, but not completed. It's calculated as the total number of story points that were committed and not completed, divided by the committed story points. Ideally, we would see reliability growing over time as teams become better at planning their sprints and estimating effort required. Let's begin. We will bring the project dimension to the pages section. This filter becomes handy if multiple JIRA projects are added to this account. We will now open up the Agile Dimensions by clicking on Show Dimensions beside the Agile heading. We will bring the Sprint Dimension under the Rows section. Notice that we can now see data being populated in the report. By default, EasyBI always includes the Issues Created measure. You can ignore it for now. You will also see that the Project's filter show up. We will select Project Marble. Also, notice that it shows all sprints collapsed in one entry in the table. We will update the hierarchy of the sprint dimension to list all the sprints in separate rows. Expand the sprint dimension by clicking on the name. Go to the All Hierarchy Level Members section and expand it. Select Sprint. Now we can see that all sprints are listed as individual rows in the table. We will now expand the measures dimension under the Columns section to bring the measures that are needed for our reports. We will remove the issues created measure. Let's show the Agile measures by clicking Show beside Agile. We can now see various predefined Agile measures from EasyBI. We will go ahead and select Sprint Story Points Committed and Sprint Story Points Completed. Now notice that we still have the No Sprint and Marvel Sprint number 4 in the table as rows. In our project, Sprint number 4 has not been started and we don't want to show the No Sprint entry. We will remove these rows by applying a row filter. We can filter the unwanted entries by showing sprints that have sprint story points committed bigger than zero. Click on the story points committed column header, select filter rows, and then the operator bigger than. A new prompt pops up. We will set the row filter to sprints that have sprint story points committed to bigger than zero. We will now create the Sprint Story Points Committed and Completed measure. When you expand the User Defined section in the Measures, you will see the option to create a new calculated measure. Click on Define New Calculated Measure. A new window pops up where you can enter the details of the new measure. We will name the measure Sprint Story Points Committed and Completed. We will break down the measure into key components. First, we need to filter all the issues that were committed and completed within a sprint. Once we have the filtered set, we need to sum up the sprint story points completed. We will begin with the filter function, which takes a set and a logical expression. In this function, the set is composed of the issues within a sprint and the logical conditions are the issues that were committed and completed. For the set expression, we will use the descendants function, which returns the set of descendants of a member at a specified level. We will enter the issue's current hierarchy member. And the level will be set at the issue level. Let's now populate the filter's logical expression where we ensure that it only takes issues that were committed and completed within the sprint. Let's add the sprint story points, committed measure and set it as bigger than zero. We will then add the and logical operator. Finally, let's enter the sprint story points completed measure and set it as bigger than zero. Now that we have the filtered set, let's sum up the completed story points. At the top, we will add the sum function. It returns the sum of a numeric expression evaluated over a set. 
it needs a set and a numeric expression. The set is the one we have already filtered, so we just need to add the numeric expression which is the measure for sprint story points completed. Let's go ahead and create the new measure. Now when we select the new user defined measure, we can see that 19 story points were committed and completed for sprint 1. Now we will go ahead and create the other measure, which is the sprint story points committed and not completed. We can copy the measure we just completed and make minor changes. Let's go to the newly created measure and copy the information. Let's now create a new user defined measure and name it sprint story points committed and not completed. We will paste the information and just modify the comments and measures from sprint story points completed to sprint story points not completed. Let's click on create. Let's add the measure to the table. Now you can see it has been populated. We will go ahead and create the reliability measure. This measure is the sprint story points committed and completed divided by the sprint story points committed. Let's click on create. Let's select the reliability measure. Notice that by default, the measure it's using a numeric decimal format. Let's go back to the measure and update it so that it displays as a percentage. Click on formatting to see the various options. Select percentage and then integer percentage. Click on update. Now the column values displays as a percentage. Let's create the sprint end spillover measure. This measure is the sprint story points committed and not completed divided by the sprint story points committed. Let's change the formatting to display as an integer percentage. Click on create. Let's bring the sprint end spillover measure. To ensure that your calculations are correct, the reliability and sprint end spillover should add up to 100%. We will remove the unwanted columns by clicking on the headers and selecting remove. We will only keep the reliability and sprint end spillover columns. Let's now select the bar chart. We will change the orientation of the bars. Click on the vertical button. We can also add the data labels by clicking on the data labels button. Let's now stack the values. We will know that the calculations are correct when both add up to 100%. Finally, we will add titles to the X and Y axis. For the X axis, we will name it sprint name. For the y-axis, we will name it percentage. Lastly, save the report and name it reliability and sprint and spillover. And that's how you create the reliability and sprint and spillover report. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more JIRA tutorials.